challenge, I'll introduce the basics of working with the Vector Mode Editor. Sprite costumes and backdrop images can be edited and created in bitmap and vector modes. I favor using vector mode over bitmap mode to have smoother, cleaner looking images, especially if resizing them. But I'll use a bitmap image if I need to draw better, or if vector images run too slowly, which rarely happens and won't be an issue for now. I'll look at the cat's costumes. The cat's costume is in vector mode already, as it shows in the lower right. To see the difference in images between vector mode and bitmap mode, I'll copy the second costume and convert it to bitmap mode. I'll click on the Duplicate Stamper and duplicate the second costume. The third costume is selected. I'll convert it to bitmap mode. I'll zoom in. I can see the sprite has jagged edges. They're pixelated now. Go back to vector mode and the edges are smooth. Jagged bitmap. Smooth vector. Vector images can be smoother. I'll delete the third costume, right-click Delete, and go back to regular magnification. I'll paint a new costume and convert it to vector mode. I'll make a railroad crossing warning sign. I'll click on Ellipse, shift for a circle I'll use. I'll make the line wider, slide it over, good thick line, press the shift key down, make a circle, move it up, Make it a little smaller. Move again. I'll fill it with yellow. Select yellow. Use the fill. Color it. Want to draw some black lines. Select black. Select line. Click and release. Click and release. I don't like that line. I'll undo it. I'll click revert. And try again. Good enough. I want the R's. Click on T for text. Put a capital R in there. Click outside. I can resize it. Make the R larger. Move it into position. The R is highlighted still. I can duplicate it. Put the copy over. Move it down a little tiny bit. I want to make a signpost. Rectangle. Make it gray, and I'll fill it, fill. I want the pole behind the sign. Click on the select button, select the rectangle. I'll even move it over a little bit. Each item I've created so far is another layer on this image. The pole's highlighted. I can move it forward, it already is. I can move it back. I'll use the shift key. Hold the shift key down, click. Now the pole's in the back layer of the image. I'll show the reshape button. Click on reshape. Select an item. Now I can change how the item looks. Grab these points and move them around. I can click on select. I can move the rectangle up for the new sign. I can draw. I'll select pencil. Choose orange and make a silly pumpkin in the middle. Fill it. Use the pencil again with green. Make a little stem. If I decide I don't need to warn pumpkins about railroad crossings and I want my original railroad crossing sign back, I can use the revert button. I'll click on it. Each click will undo the last thing I did to the image. The stem is gone. The fill is gone. The pumpkin's gone. The post is moved back. Bottom of the circle's fixed. And the top of the circle's fixed. As long as I don't edit anything now, I can still get back my changes with redo. I can bend the circle again, move the post, and three more clicks, get my pumpkin back. Editing a vector image is different from editing a bitmap image. Each time I draw something on a vector image, I add a different item to the image. As you've seen, I can select individual items in the image. Click on Select. I can click on the pumpkin. I can also delete the pumpkin. I'll press the Delete key on the keyboard. And the pumpkin's gone. I can get rid of the stem. Select it. Delete. And the pole. Select it. Delete. Deletes can be undone, too. I'm finished with this challenge. I encourage you to play with the Vector Mode Editor and get comfortable using its basic commands. The buttons on the right, 
the color selection and undo and redo. Try creating a vector mode costume or a backdrop. Experiment with it and let your creative side have fun drawing whatever you like.